Hey, we're going to be covering chapter 2.3, Graph Equations of Lines. So just as a reminder, functions are a relation in which each input has one output. So now that we've remembered that, let's move on to new things. So a parent function is the most basic function in a family. In a family, we define as a group with shared characteristics. So I'll just use an example. This is a linear function right here. Let's say we wanted another one that's similar. It would be like this or like this. These are all within the same family. So this one is a linear function. So this is the parent function of a linear function. It is the most basic function in that family. A more complex uh, function in a family would be something like f of x equals 2x, or f of x equals 2x plus 1, getting more complex each time, with this as the most basic. Next, the book defines the y-intercept as the y-coordinate of a point where the graph intersects the y-axis. Sorry. Where the graph intersects the y-axis. So on this little graph here, that would be this point here. On this graph, it would happen to be the origin, where um, the origin is where the graph intersects the y-axis. So this is the y-axis, and this is the intersection. So in our slope-intercept form, we already covered that the m is the slope value. So once again, the m here, say this is 1, so say equals y equals x dot 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 something you have a 1 here as your m value, then you know the slope is 1. Next, we're going to define that the b is the y-intercept value. So the b here, say we have 2, that means that, remember, the y-intercept is the point at which the graph intersects the y-axis, so that point would be 0, 2, because it's on the y-axis. So moving to our example, we, our graph um, has an equation of y equals negative two-thirds x minus one. So its b value is negative one, which we then know is zero, one, as we saw above. Next, we can see that for our slope value, we have negative two-thirds as our m, and so our slope is negative two-thirds. So if we graph this, we have a point at zero, negative one, so I'll make that a big dot, zero, negative one, here. So we can use our slope value of negative two-thirds to use uh, to make our next point on this graph and then connect and make a line. So we know from the slope value here we have a negative slope so that's going to look something like this um, falling and going from left to right and then we will remember that rise over run is how we know what slope is so or you could say y over x, so 2 over 3 fits into that well. Uh, again, it's negative, and then 2 is our rise, and 3 is our run, so we're going to be going up 2 in the y space, and over 3 in the x space every time, so three hor 2 horizontally, and 3 vertically. So, um, just like a it's not a very good graph here, but if we were to go up to on this graph, we would have this point here, and then we need to go over 3. That would be about 1, 2, 3, that would be about here. And then we just need to connect these points, and we get our line. So we've already covered slope-intercept form, which we know again as y equals mx plus b, and this is slope-intercept form. Um, next, we're going to be covering standard form, which is the form of ax plus by equals c. So with numbers that would look like uh, 2x plus 3y equals c. And these two forms are really interchangeable, as we can solve for y to get slope-intercept form. So our example problem is graph 5x plus 2y equals 10. So we're going to do that by first finding the y and x intercepts of this equation, and we do that by letting y equal 0 and then solving for the x plot point. So let's 
So specifically, we're going to plug in 5, at, we're going to write down 5x plus 2, and then let y equal 0, so 0 equals 10. So you have just 5x equals 10, x equals 2. So 2, that is our x-intercept. And then for our y-intercept, we let x equal 0, so 5 times 0 plus 2y equals 10, 2y equals 10, y is 5. So we have 0, 5. And from this, we can graph. So we have these two points here. Draw our graph in. And we have 2, 0 and 0, 5. And we can connect these points to get our graph. Oops. It's a little off. There's our graph. There we go. So horizontal and vertical lines. We already know, of course, that horizontal lines are like this and vertical lines like this. But we really want to find out what the equation of those lines is. So looking at horizontal lines specifically, that would have an equation of y equals c, in which c is a constant. So let's say 8, y equals 8. So on an actual graph, this would be something like y equals 8, in which 8 is up here. So we have a line at 8. That's 8. So moving to vertical lines, the equation would be x equals c, in which c is a constant, so we can use 8 again. x equals 8. And on a graph, sorry, it's a bad place. Um, on a graph, we would have, let's say 8 is over here, we have a graph that is a vertical line at 8. It makes sense because you can take any point on this line and you'll still have 8. If x is 8, if x is always 8, it will always be on this line. So if we have um, 8, 2, that's on the line. If we have 8, 3, that's also on the line. So x is always 8, so therefore x equals 8. And you can use the same logic for the horizontal line.